their reporting requirements concerning health care coverage to ensure compliance with the Affordable Care Act. In this lesson, you will learn about the actions you need to take to accommodate the new reporting requirements. By completing this lesson, you'll be able to enter the health care plan information for your company and employees. First, let's review just a little on the guidelines that you will need to follow and the forms you will need to file. Applicable large employers or employers who have more than 50 full-time or full-time equivalent employees will be required to complete new forms at the end of the tax year. We have made changes to the software that will make it easier for you to produce these tax forms at the end of the year and determine the number of full-time and full-time equivalent employees working for your business in each month of the year. These forms have been added to the Atrix Tax Forms Library in the 5-4 Federal and State Tax Filing menu. IRS has issued forms to comply with this Affordable Care Act reporting, and they include the 1094-B, 1095-B, 1094-C, and the 1095-C. You will walk through printing these forms, whichever one is applicable to you, in Video 3 and 4 of this ACA series. This chart provides, at a glance, the Affordable Care Act forms and information that must be provided to employees and the IRS at the end of the year. The number of full-time equivalent employees employed at your business and the type of health care plan you have offered to them will determine what forms you are required to submit and what information or sections you are required to complete on them. To learn how to determine your full-time equivalent or FTE, employee count, view the lesson titled Track and Reconcile ACA Hours Allocation. All of the forms listed above are available to be printed and or e-file in the Payroll, Federal e-file and Reporting menu, and then Federal Forms. Once you've determined which forms you're required to submit and the sections you're required to complete on those forms, you will want to make sure you're tracking the information necessary to complete them in your payroll software which is our focus for the remainder of this lesson. Pause this lesson so you have a chance to review the chart, then click play when you're ready to continue the lesson. The first step you'll need to take is to install the year-end update. When the update is available, an email will be sent to all contacts that contains a software notice. This notice will include links that you can follow to find information about the changes that are being made, and instructions that you can follow to download and install the appropriate update for your software. Installing the year-end update is an important step as it provides critical changes to the software. As always, we recommend that you review the release notes to learn all about the latest enhancements, which can be found on the product download notice or in the Home and Resource Activity tab after installation. How do you get started tracking the information you'll need to generate the required ACA forms? The first step is to enter the ACA company information, which we'll see in the next section of this video. The second step is to enter the health care plan information on a new tab for each of your employees. Once your employees have been updated, you have a couple of options available to you when determining how you would like to generate the ACA hour accumulation within the software. If you use the date field when you enter in time in the 522 payroll records window, the program will automatically accumulate the correct ACA hours. If you do not use the date field or have employees that do not accumulate hours, like salary employees, you can manually input the ACA hours in the 522 payroll records window. The last option is to wait to the end of the year and manually enter in all the employee health plan information and their hours directly into the 1094 and the 1095 form. If you're unsure of your ALE status or would like to monitor your ACA hours on a monthly basis, let's proceed and we'll start with the process to update your company and employees with health plan information. Let's start with the first step in this preparation video. If you are self-insured and have fewer than 50 full-time equivalent employees, you will be required to file the 1095 and 1094 B forms. You must set up the origin of policy code in the Utilities menu. Let me show you how. Open the Utilities menu, then select Company Information. 
In the ACA Policy Origin Code field, click the drop-down arrow and select the appropriate code for your company. Then click Save to exit. The next step is to set up your employee's ACA health plan information. Let's open the 521 Employees window to view the ACA tab. We'll select employee number one and select the ACA tab. Use this tab to record information about the employee's health care plan as required by the Affordable Care Act. Let's start with work status. The options for work status are full-time, part-time, seasonal, and exempt. If you select full-time, the employee will automatically count towards your full-time count and you are not required to accumulate hours for the employee. If you select part-time, the employee's hours will be accumulated and added to the ACA hours allocation. If the employee is seasonal, we recommend you review the documentation for the ACA reporting on the IRS website to help with this determination. If the employee is not subject to ACA reporting, select Exempt and they will be excluded from any reports. Last but not least, you can select the blank option to designate the employee as not working. Notice once a selection has been made, it is then populated into the remaining months. If a change is needed, select the appropriate field for the month the change of status or code occurred. The following months will then repopulate with the new change. Select the code for the type of health care coverage your company offers for this employee. For more information about the coverage codes, see the Internal Revenue Service website. If your company qualifies for a safe harbor, select the applicable safe harbor code here. If your company offered minimum essential health care coverage providing minimum value, type the monthly premium amount for self-coverage for the lowest cost monthly premium in the Share of Minimum Plan Premium field. If your company offered a self-insured health plan and this employee enrolled in that plan, you will also need to enter the information about all of the individuals covered by the plan in the lower portion of this window. Click Add Individual, enter the name, relation, social security number, and date of birth. Then select each month that that individual had coverage. If you need to add another person, click the Add Individual button and repeat the process. Another workflow you may encounter over the course of a year is the process of a terminated, laid off, or employee who has quit. You will need to change the work status, codes, and covered individual checkboxes if needed. Visit the IRS website for the instructions for the 1094 and 1095C, the websites listed below. Let's review one of our options for accumulating ACA hours. In option one, we'll review how to enter in ACA hours manually, as you might need to do for maybe a salary employee that was not selected as full-time on their 521 Employee ACA tab. Open 522 Payroll Records. We'll start with the normal processing of a salary employee's time card. Using Robert Smith in this example, his normal payroll record has been entered. Notice the fields ACA hours did not prefill. Click into the ACA hours first field and begin to type the number 40. When the typing begins, a message displays letting you know that you're manually overriding an amount that would normally be automatically calculating from the time card grid below. Click Yes to continue. Since Robert's check has a period start and a period end date within the same month, we will finish typing the hours in only the first ACA hours field. Then click Save. Viewing a different check scenario for Robert, notice the period start and the period end date are within different months. When entering these hours, you'll need to split the hours appropriately between the two months for correct reporting. Once again, click Yes to acknowledge the message. Enter 16 hours in the first ACA hours field 
for March 30th and 31st. Then click Save to exit the payroll record. The second option is to let the ACA hours compute automatically. Using Michael Brown in this example, enter his time entries in the time card grid using the date field, and you can see the ACA hours automatically prefill. Save the record and we'll discuss option three. And option three would be to directly enter all information into the forms in the 5-4 Federal Forms window. We do recommend that you set up the employee's information and add the date column to your time entry grid for next year's reporting. As mentioned earlier in the lesson, if you're an employer with 50 or more full-time or full-time equivalent employees, most likely you'll be required to submit the new forms for the year. We have added new reports within the software that you can use to determine your full-time and full-time equivalent employee counts by the month for the entire year, and use these reports to reconcile the numbers with the Atrix produced federal forms. In the next lesson, you'll learn how to track and reconcile ACA hours and determine which forms you may need to provide to your employees and the IRS. Sage offers several ways for you to interact and get the answers you need quickly. Get help from others with similar questions in a Sage City community, find answers in our knowledge base, or take an online course on Sage University.